All right, joining me now to talk about the gift economy in which Chris Christie is himself embedded is former Democratic Missouri State Senator Jeff Smith, who went to prison for campaign violations during his 2004 campaign, now assistant professor at the New School, and MSNBC contributor Brian Murphy, assistant professor at Baruch College. Um, all right, first of all, can we start on the Christie story? Where in the scale of this? I mean, you're a politician, you're around state houses. By the way, state houses. America are a cesspool, okay? <laughs> State houses are a cesspool. Let's just be clear on that, at least the ones that I've covered. Uh, where do you think this is? I don't, I don't think it's that bad. I mean, <laughs> uh, I, I, I think, you know. $30,000. Oh, come on, who among us hasn't spent 30 grand on a couple hotel rooms, Chris? <laughs> but for real, I just think the timing is terrible for him. You know, he's got a couple people that he's really competing with for establishment money. One is Jeb Bush and one is Scott Walker. To push off Jeb Bush, he's trying to play, I'm the everyman guy, right, the Jersey guy, right, right. and this really hurts that. And then when you got him sitting in a box with Jerry Jones and Scott Walker out there with the cheese heads, you know, in the, in the cheap seats, it's just not a good look for him right now. Right, yeah. It's not a good look politically. I think yeah. the optics here, or do you think, what, what do you think about the, I mean, the most striking thing to me in the entire article was you're flying on a guy's private jet on mm -hmm. a trip when he's like very publicly and clearly lobbying you on a pretty important piece of legislation that's going to come before you that will absolutely 100% affect his bottom line. Right. And he came out the right way on it, right, contrary to the interests of the jet owner. But that just seems like manifestly corrupt. I think, I mean, I think also he would have had legislative opposition had he come out, had he done something different. Right, right. right. Um, because of the way the politics were in Jersey on, around this. I think the problem, actually, I thought the more interesting part of that story was, wondering who the sources were and wondering if it was a former member of his staff who he might have publicly trashed a year ago. Uh, ah, because if you're, do, if you're doing that, um, and this is something that I wrote about last year that a lot of us talked about last year, uh, there are people involved in the Bridgegate scandal who, who the governor was delighted to uh, publicly, who would, I think, know, know things, about are buried, things that happened in that office. And I'm a little, I think, again, this like this sort of why he, didn't he take a little bit more care of his long-term political viability if he knew that he was going to be running in this position now, uh, why did you do this a year ago or so, two years ago? So let's talk about the psychology of free stuff, okay? Let's just be clear here. People like free stuff. Like, <laughs> I'm, like if you were watching this right now, like come into your office tomorrow with 12 donuts and watch people descend like hyenas <laughs> on a GD carcass. We teach like, it at college. Yeah, like people like free stuff. I'm, I like free stuff. I like when someone buys me dinner. Like that is just, but like what is the psychology of like that specifically do you think as a former elected rep, yeah. particularly in a state house where in some ways you have a lot of power, but you don't have a lot of money relative to a lot of the people you're interfacing with. Yeah, I think that's exactly right. When you get elected, one thing you learn is you suddenly get a lot better looking, you get funnier, right. and people want to buy you stuff all the time. So it's a heady experience. Right. You know? right. But w <laughs> what you have to do is you have to try to separate yourself and, and take yourself back into a milieu that that is completely separate from politics. For me, it was my parents' house. Every Sunday night, I would have dinner with my parents' house. And they're the two cheapest people alive. Like, they're so cheap that when I was growing up and I'd be away at camp, I thought my last name was irregular because it was in the back of all my clothes. So you need to get yourself out of that situation so you can remember how regular people are. But I guess live. the question then is how corrupting is it, right? Like just the, 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 the steady stream of, and you covered Jersey politics, mm -hmm. Jersey actually has pretty strong rules on this. Here in New York, we've got, you know, the new assembly speaker who's got a per diem budget of, you know, 20,000 plus. Yeah. Like how corrupting is it? What, what do we know about how corrupting it is? I think the problem that we have and this is, I, I think, a problem in a lot of different states, and I've seen this up close in Jersey, is that the, the definition that we operate under is that you're allowed to do what's legal. And what's legal is uh, really the distinction between a bribe and a gift Thank uh, you. is an almost meaningless distinction the way it's been written in the laws today. Right. So we've sort of created all these avenues for money and influence to be exercised in politics in a way that like never shows up on a donation form, right? Like if you're if you're going to cover influence in politics and That's, you're looking at donation you. forms, like you are starting in the wrong place. This, so this is a great this this point about uh, all you have to do to transform a bribe into mm -hmm. a gift is temporally separate. Them. That's right. That's right. Okay. Yeah. So and, and, and a bribe is I come into your office, yeah. I say, uh, Senator Smith, I really need you to deliver on this bill for me, and here's you know X dollars. A gift is. Come to my come to my my house in the wherever on the beach. Stay for a little bit. Blah blah. Six months later, 
you know what? I could really use a talk with Senator Smith about what's going on before his committee. So <laughs> I, I obviously made some mistakes in public life. They didn't have anything to do. No, they didn't. That's they didn't have anything to do with, with bribery. But one of the things I speak now to state legislatures around the country, and one of the things I counsel them uh, is something that I learned to do, which was to never have a conversation about a contribution in the same mm -hmm. time or, or place that you have a conversation about public policy. Right. So if you call and you ask for money, and then they call you back uh, two days later, and they say, hey, you know, uh, I want to talk to you about this bill, and also I'm good to go for the $10,000, what you have to learn to do is to say, okay, I appreciate that. I'll call you back tomorrow and we can but, talk. But that is a perfect example, and again, it gets back to this Christie gift-giving thing, which is that, like, okay, by the letter of the law, I understand that, but let's understand the milieu that you are operating in. Yeah. The milieu you're operating in is lots of people with lots of money who want stuff from you. If they don't want it now, they're going to want it in the future, who could buy you and your family stuff that is going to incur a sense in mm -hmm. any normal, non-sociopathic human being mm -hmm. of obligation. Of obligation. And I think that's exactly, I think, the, the issue that, you know, we have to think about in designing policy and writing law around this is how do you create independence among your elected legislators? Right. And right now we have people who are totally dependent, dependent. on the And right. right now they're not even pretending in this cycle. Someone's like, giving you I a need... ride on their private yeah. plane. Yeah. You are not independent. Jeff I Smith need my billionaire. And Brian yeah. Murphy. Thank you both. Thank you. All right. Thank you.